Yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to all students. So before you can continue with this video, you must see the first three videos that I posted about Hardy Cross. So without understanding of the previous videos, you will not understand about this exercise that I do in Excel. Okay. Um, so, I hope all of you are familiar with Excel, but if you are not, maybe this is the first um, introduction for you. But I don't think so, you are in the Gen Y, right? So, you must be familiar already with all this calculation in the Excel. So, let's continue. So, this is from the example that I take from textbook um, from page 85. This is from example 5. So the figure that I show here is also from the same exercise. So I already explained about this figure. So please watch the previous videos. So what you see now in these uh, green boxes. So there are the information given from the example. Okay. So uh, you have um, five different nodes. Um, as I told you what comes in must be equal to with what goes out so we have uh, five notes one two three four and five notes so that's why you have five equation so all this equation is um, based on the information given okay mm. okay and for this one this is pi uh, the diameter the area the epsilon um, d over epsilon this is mu, mu, okay, and 2g, all these are given in the example. So, uh, this exercise is, um, the units are in American unit, but it, it is not a problem because when you have to solve the, this problem using uh, SI units, you can also use the same equation, okay? Okay, uh, let's see. Um, uh, except, exception, yeah, exception for F. Okay, so for F, this is for um, using the American unit. Because if you have to use the SI, then the unit for F, for friction factor, will be different. Uh, which you can also find in the textbook. Um, uh, as I already, already explained in the previous lecture. Okay, let's now see. Okay, so you know that Hardy cross method is based on the iteration method. So we have a few trials here. Uh, for example, in this um, exercise, I already did like three trials. One in this yellow, two and three trials. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what is it? What is it about? Okay, so the first here. Okay, so this is the uh, the formula that I use. In the calculation so l is the length of the pipe so q q assume this is absolute because we only want to know the value not the direction yet uh, so this is only the value of q that we assume so if you want to assume this q uh, it must fulfill with this okay so this is referring to information given so whatever you assume here it must fulfill these values okay this equation okay and then once you determine the assume uh, q from here which is uh, in accordance with this um, condition and then you can put the same value of q but now here with direction okay the direction is also i already explained in the previous video Okay, so now you can start calculating, you can start finding the H, the friction loss, right? You want to find the friction loss, but before you can find the friction loss, you have few uh, steps before reaching to this stage, yeah? So first, you want to calculate the, um, what do you call this? Um, this NR, Reynolds number. So, you calculate the Reynolds number here. Uh, this is simply D over A times 
times mu mu okay so you can do this calculation okay so when you look at yeah, look in this cell you can see the explanation is here this is what i i put in this cell okay so i will give you the, the copy of this excel file and you can explore based on my explanation now okay so this is nr reynolds number you just put the equation and then you pick all the values and then you can have this answer here okay and then this is nr also reynolds number but this is absolute which means there is no negative value whatsoever this is only the uh, reynolds number okay because here when i give q with direction then uh, reynolds number in this cell will give you the direction but now for the for determining f we don't need the direction so here we, you have uh, reynolds number only in absolute value okay next since we already have new um, um the reynolds number we can calculate f so in this case you also did uh, need d over e but d over e is already given here so you can give uh, put all the values in this equation so this is when you click in this cell you can see how what are the items that i put in how the how do i give the formula how do i input the formula okay so once you have the friction factor which is f you can calculate k so in the next cell this is k um this is also everything was given uh, everything in this cell, um, excel file is given in the previous notes so all this formula are the formula that you already know so this is how to calculate k and then next you can calculate h which is the heat loss according to this formula k is h is equals to k q to the power of 2 so this is without the direction but later in this pink okay pink cell okay you can see that uh, this is heat loss with direction because in the end direction is very important okay so when you have h okay uh, from starting from these cells from this this is actually you want to determine delta q so delta q is given by this formula so i uh, do one by one so this is the heat loss um in this cell this is the heat loss um clockwise so this is and the next one is the summation of heat loss counterclockwise so we can see how i calculate here by adding up these two because this is a positive so it is for heat loss of clockwise and for this one this is the heat loss for anti-clockwise so we only have one here so it is equals to this cell okay um so in this case um the sign of, ne of negative is not important so you have to follow my uh, calculation here right okay okay so this is uh, in the next cell you see here this is summation of heat loss clockwise divide by flow rate clockwise uh, so if you want to know how do i calculate in this cell you just double click and you can see what's going on in the calculation okay next this is uh, energy uh, sorry heat loss counterclockwise divide by uh, flow rate counterclockwise so again double click to see what's going on in the cell and finally you can calculate delta q so for the first time delta q was calculated so you can see that the value is 0 0.1 and 0 0.05 so maybe you want to try again in the next trial so when you do the next trial you should you should expect that the delta q is smaller okay because uh, the smaller it goes then you you know that you can stop the iteration so in the second trial again you have to assume q okay so when you assume q please make sure that it fulfill the requirement the give uh, the information given uh, in the ex uh, in the question so you have to change this right because you want to assume q but make sure that it fulfill this 
requirement. So, when you determine QA, when you determine QB, QA plus QB must equal with 1.2. Okay, so it's the same as this. So, when I do this assumption here, I make sure that it fulfill the requirement. So, uh, in the next cell, you can just copy from the one that you did up here. So, you can just copy everything and it, uh, the calculation will change according to the newly assumed Q. And so, finally, you can get delta Q. So, you can compare this delta Q for trial number 2 is smaller than delta Q in the trial 1. So, which means this is better Q assumed. Okay? So, next, you can move on to the third trial. Okay, in this third trial, again, you must fulfill the requirement from this equation. Um, and then, you copy all the formula and it will, uh, Excel will give you this. You don't need to do it manually. And then finally, you can get delta Q. Okay, delta Q. Okay, so delta Q in the, tri in the third trial is not uh, very much different with the first trial. In fact, uh, in the second trial, in fact, the second trial uh, gave a better delta Q than the third trial. So you can decide to take Q assumed from the second trial. So you can take this as the final answer. Uh, but if you check uh, whatever I did here with the example, my answer is uh, a bit different than the example. But if you want to do the example um, manually, maybe you'll ca you can get the same answer as the textbook. But here when I do with Excel, the answer is different. But I think it's okay. It's just a matter of... Uh, because I'm not doing the calculation by myself, so the Excel is doing the calculation for me. So I guess I can believe uh, the answer given by the Excel as long as I use the right formula. So maybe you can do by yourself. I will give you the copy of this Excel and you can try by yourself, get familiar with all this calculation uh, so, it, so that in the future you can do it by yourself. This topic is very important. Okay, that's all for now. Um, I see you in the next video. Thank you.